When it comes to localized storage, solid state drives are the rage. Let's dissect this technology in this micro nugget. This is a slice of my Storage Plus course here at CBT Nuggets. Yes, very exciting options in the solid state drive technology today. First of all, we have internal disk drives that look just like the traditional mechanical drives when we're looking at this thing from the outside. I know we haven't gotten into the protocols and the interfaces yet that we utilize with hard drives, but trust me, these things are gonna be able to do SATA, they're gonna be able to do SAS, they're gonna be able to do fiber channel. So we're talking about something that plugs into our infrastructure structure just like a traditional mechanical drive but as we're going to learn there's a lot different going inside one of these solid state drives to give us remarkable performance enhancements. Now another way we can add this storage to our system is a PCI Express card solid state card option. This is another exciting way in which to introduce SSD technologies to your infrastructure. With Whichever we utilize, whether it's the traditional disk-like structure or whether we're adding this PCI Express card, we'll often find that there is DRAM utilized in conjunction with solid-state disk technology in order to provide a nice fast memory structure for handling things like the internal addressing, the internal writing to blocks that's going to be done on one of these devices. What's so exciting about this technology? Well, inside this casing, there's no moving parts. That's right, take that spinning platter that we looked at in the mechanical hard disk drive and get rid of it completely. No moving parts means a lot less latency. I mean, think about one of the things that we had happening. We had that read-write arm with the read-write head moving over the top of that spinning platter. This was causing latency in something that we call seek time. And we'll get into the metrics that we use for storage performance later on in this course. But suffice it to say that when you eliminate that moving arm over the spinning platter, all kinds of efficiencies start to kick in. Let's face it, if we have no moving parts inside the solid state drive, we're gonna have a much more reliable structure. We're gonna require overall less power and cooling. And when it comes to performance, we're gonna get a much more predictable performance metric out of this solid state disk technology. Now, this comes at a cost. In fact, later on in this particular nugget, we'll take a tour and we'll just look at some current day, at least as the time of this recording, some current day pricing so we can figure out just what type of a premium we're going to pay for this improved performance. So, we have these solid state disk drives that are going to really, really be dramatically faster and more reliable than their mechanical counterparts. Now, what's the technology inside? Well, the overwhelming technology that's utilized today is called NAND flash memory that is the technology inside the solid state drive. Now, remember on a spinning platter, we used tracks and we used sectors and that was the technology that was utilized on the spinning platter? Well, that changes here. In the NAND flash technology, we use cells. The cell is, for instance, the zero or one setting. These are collected into pages, and these pages are collected into blocks. Typical sizing here goes from like 4K to 16K on a page size, and 128K to about 512K on a block size. So our cells are the zero to one setting, and these are collected into pages and blocks. What's really interesting is that erasing a section of the flash memory and then writing some more information is done at the block level. In fact, this is one of the reasons why we suspect this is termed flash technology because an entire block is going to be erased and written to at a time. Another theory on why we call it flash technology dates back to the old EE proms. These were written to, they were erased utilizing ultraviolet light. 
So maybe that's why we call it flash technology. Either way, I want you to realize that we are erasing and writing to the disk in a block. Now, that's actually something that's interesting. You see, when you first plug in your solid state drive, all of the cells are preset to a one value. And the first time you write to any block, it is a lightning fast process. But if you go to rewrite, erase, and then rewrite a block of information, the disk has to do what's called a read, erase, and program of that particular block. This is relatively slow. So solid state drive technology does something really clever. It keeps hidden pre-erased blocks for you. And when you go to write to the disk, it will then reveal that block that doesn't have to be read, erased, and programs. So this is a very, very clever process that keeps the solid state drive technology being blazingly fast. Now, you might ask the very astute question, what happens if your drive is getting so incredibly full? And remember, we are dealing, we tend to deal with smaller capacities here, like this 256 gig drive, because we're spending more money for larger capacities with this technology. So what happens if it runs out of these pre-erased blocks for you? Well, this is what's termed the right cliff with this technology. Yeah, you hit that right cliff, and unfortunately, it has to go through this relatively time-intense read-erase program, and now your solid-state drive is indeed starting to slow down. Now, here's a question for you. If you had the mechanical hard disk structure that we covered in an earlier nugget, and then you take that out of your device and you install this new technology, how does the operating system, I mean, how is it gonna deal with this? It's used to tracks and it's used to sectors and cylinders and all that technology, and now we're throwing something completely different at it. Ah, wait a minute. Remember that logical block addressing? Yeah, that was technology that would shield us from what is going on on the actual disk, and guess what? Same thing is happening here. Logical block addressing shields the cell page and block type structure that the disk is using from the operating system. The operating system literally does not care what this underlying technology is because of LBA shielding the operating system from those details. Now, the technologies that you can find underlying SSD are things like single level cell technology. As you might guess, you are storing one bit of information in each cell with this technology. This is very high performance, but unfortunately it comes at a very, very high cost. So we introduced multi-level cell technology. Sure enough, you can store two bits in a cell. When you do this, you are sacrificing the overall life of the SSD technology. You see, remember we said it's a program in a race type thing? Well, they will literally measure the lifespan of one of these in how many program in a race cycles you can have. For instance, with single level cell technology, we can have 1,000 program erase cycles before we really start to worry about the health of those cells. When we start doing two-bit cell technology, that number may go down to 10,000 as far as the overall lifespan of that particular device can go. There's Enterprise multi-level cell technology. What enterprise multi-level cell technology will do is really super over-provision the drive. Over-provisioning means it is hiding. Remember we said that? It'll hide a lot of blocks, and these additional blocks will allow for that very fast writing time. So what happens here is you might see a 400 gigabyte drive 
and there's actually 800 gigabytes involved. It's just 400 gigs are being hidden and allowing for this over-provisioning for this very high-performance, highly reliable disk structure. There's even TLC, yep, you guessed it, triple-level cell technology that will allow three bits to be stored in each cell. So when you look at the disk drive environment today, we get a little annoyed. We want high capacity, definitely. I mean, we want four terabytes these days because obviously the more capacity, the better as we look to store larger and larger files in greater and greater amounts locally. But we also want to save money. And we would love the higher performance that SSD technology brings. But again, to purchase four terabytes, this is going to come at an incredible cost. Enter hybrid technology. That's right. We'll have a spinning platter and we'll have SSD technology together in the same drive. Now, what's really interesting about this is how about writing data to a hybrid drive? We've seen two approaches that have been utilized in actual practice. One approach says, let's go ahead and write data to the platter. And then once we figure out what the end user is going to be accessing frequently, we'll move that into the SSD for faster retrieval. Another approach taken by hybrid drive vendors says, no, 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 no. Let's write new information to the SSD. And then when we figure out what they don't use, let's move it to the platter. While both of these approaches have been taken by hybrid drive manufacturers, suffice it to say that you and I really don't care. All we care about is that we get fast, faster than mechanical hard drive performance and we get it at a reduced cost. So hybrid technology, certainly something to consider as we are looking at this technology today. So what an interesting decision that we have to make these days when it comes to costs for this localized storage. I went ahead and pulled some numbers for you. Again, this is as of the time of this recording, and we are talking June 2014 for these prices. But one terabyte of storage from a hard disk drive from a purely mechanical standpoint, $59. Pretty remarkably small number right there. Hybrid technology for the terabyte, $94. All solid state, $499 for the terabyte of storage. We can definitely see from these price tags the remarkable performance. I mean, the performance is conveyed in that price tag. But I'll tell you, hybrid drives with improved performance for not that much more money are definitely something for us to consider these days. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed this sneak peek at Storage Plus here at CBT Nuggets, where we took a look at solid state drive technology. I sure hope this micro nugget was informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.